Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and this is the Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Eric. The Diagnosis, Lesson 3. Why the Diagnosis? Laymen and even some dietetic experts, with the exception of myself, believe there is no need for diagnosis. You may ask, since there is only one disease, why diagnose? If all sickness is due to uncleanliness from uneliminated, undigested food, mucus, uric acid, toxemias, drugs, etc., why diagnose? We shall now learn why fruit diet and fasting have produced such doubtful results through their incorrect use and misunderstanding caused through the belief that general rules of this cure are suitable for everybody and for every case. Nothing is further from the truth. No other cure requires so much individual specialization and continual changing to meet the reaction of the patient. This is why people who attempt these methods of cure without expert advice frequently bring about serious results. Promiscuous fasting. McFadden and many others advise, for instance, fasting as applicable to all cases. I learned through thousands of cases during my experience that nothing requires more individual, different application than fasting and the mucusless diet. Of two patients, one may affect a complete recovery after a fast of two or three weeks, while the other may die from the same treatment. This is why an individual diagnosis of general conditions and constitutional encumbrances is so necessary. Method of Constitutional Diagnosis My diagnosis determines the following points. Number one, the relative amount of encumbrance in the system. Number two, the predominant part, that is, whether more mucus or more poisons. Number three, if pus is present in the system, amount and kind of drugs used. Number four, if internal tissue or an organ is in the process of decomposition. Number five, how far vitality is lower. You will also learn through experience and observations along these lines that the general appearance especially the face of the patient, will indicate more or less the internal conditions. Medical diagnosis throws no real light on the subject, although doctors think it more important than the actual cure. It is made up of a series of reports of symptoms and a scheme of experiences from which thousands of diseases are named. Characteristic of the meaningless medical diagnosis is the frequent statement of many patients that the doctor could not find out what I have. The name of the disease does not concern us at all. A man with gout, one with indigestion, or one with Bright's disease may start with the same advice. Whether to fast, for instance, and how long does not depend upon the name of the disease but upon the patient's condition and how far vitality is lowered. Naturopathic Concepts Naturopathy is an advance over medicine in teaching that all disease is constitutional. Naturopathy does not explain sufficiently the source, nature, and composition of foreign matters as the fundamental oneness of all disease. Dr. Lyman said, every disease is caused by carbonic acid and gas. But he did not learn its source in decayed, uneliminated food substances, the mucus in a state of continuous fermentation. Dr. Yeager said, disease is a stench. Nature gives a diagnosis through bad odor, which indicates how far the inside decomposition has progressed. Dr. Hay of England, the founder of the anti-uric acid diet, based his conception of general diagnosis 
on the assumption that the majority of diseases are caused through uric acid. Certainly an important part of diseased matter besides mucus. Naturopathy lays considerable stress and importance on symptomatical diagnosis in spite of the acknowledgement that there is only one disease. Uric diagnosis. Medical doctors and many others consider this special kind of diagnosis as the most important one, but it is fundamentally misunderstood. Besides the digestive tract, the uric canal is the main avenue of elimination. As soon as anyone decreases his eating, fasts a little, or changes over to the natural diet, he has waste, mucus, poisons, uric acid, phosphates, etc. in his urine, and an analysis of his urine is alarming. This same thing happens in the majority of cases whenever anyone becomes sick. Everyone becomes alarmed at this effort of the body to eliminate waste, which is, in truth, the healing, cleansing process. Should sugar or albumin be found in the urine, the case is called very serious, and diagnosed diabetes or Bright's disease, respectively. Under medical treatment, the patient in the first named case dies through sugar starvation caused through a lack of sugar and sugar formers in the dietary. In the later diagnosis the patient dies from forced albumin replacement resulting from overfeeding of foods rich in albumin. Whatever the body expels is waste, decayed, dead, and simply indicates that the patient is in an advanced state of inside uncleanliness, already causing a decomposition of inside organs, producing rapid decay of all food taken into the body. These cases, like tuberculosis, must be treated very carefully and very slowly. How it looks in the human colon. It is of the utmost importance that through our diagnosis we must learn as much as possible the general appearance of the inside of the human body. Our diagnosis therefore consists in finding out the degree of quantities of individual waste matter of the patient. Experts in autopsy state they have found that from 60 to 70 percent of the colons examined have foreign matters such as worms and decades old feces stones. The inside walls of the over intestines are encrusted by old hardened feces and resemble in appearance the inside of a filthy stovepipe. I had fat patients that eliminated from their body as much as 50 to 60 pounds of waste and 10 to 15 pounds alone from the colon, mainly consisting of foreign matters, especially old, hardened feces. The average so-called healthy man of today carries continually with him, since childhood, several pounds of never eliminated feces. One good stool a day means nothing. A fat and sick man is, in fact, a living cesspool. A distinct surprise to me was that a number of my patients in such condition had already undertaken so-called natural cures. Peace, love, and breath.